If you've been on this channel, you know I like shiny Pokemon, and the shiny charm helps you get more shiny Pokemon. But getting the shiny charm takes a pretty long time. Or does it? I bought a third Switch recently, and I needed a new main save file for it. And I kinda released all of the Pokemon from my previous shiny charm acquisition. So today, we're seeing how fast you can get the shiny charm on a brand new save file. But not only that, we're gonna make a living dex while we're at it. So that way, I never have to catch a non-shiny Pokemon ever again. In in Scarlet and Violet at least. Enough talk, let's do this. First things first, we need to beat the game. We technically don't need to, but it will be easier to catch everything with better Pokeballs. And we'll have money for those better Pokeballs sooner, so we should just beat the game quickly. Speaking of balls... <laughs> oh no, I'm making that joke again. Seeing as we want to get the shiny charm fast, we probably want to beat the game fast as well. And we had certain methods to making things go faster. I made a fully competitive level 100 Miascarada and just one-shot everything. There is a level cap mechanic, but if a Pokemon is your OT and that Pokemon obeyed you when you owned it, then it will continue to obey you even after transferring it to a different game and getting it to level 100. And let me tell you just how optimized the Pokemon Scarlet speedruns are. Even though I ran through the game with a level 100 Pokemon, I still wasn't faster than the world record speedrun. In fact, it wouldn't have even been top 20, even if you removed the time it took to train the Miascarada. After dealing out one shot after one shot after one shot, getting revenge on the cheater Nimona, and finding a random shiny Gibble when I was finishing the game. Are you freaking kidding me? I finished the game in 6 hours and 35 minutes, with an in-game time around 6 hours flat. I did the majority of this challenge, including the speedrun and about 90% of the Pokedex while streaming on Twitch by the way. Come stop by and maybe you'll catch a sneak peek at the future videos I'll be working on. After the speedrun off stream, I progressed the save file further, spending the next hour and 15 minutes going on a rampage, destroying every gym leader a second time, and demolishing the Academy Ace tournament. And this is where the living dex journey truly begins with 7 hours and 6 minutes of in-game time. The first order of business was to finish a couple terror raids, not only to get the Pokemon inside, but also for the items to get money. This was during the second Mewtwo prep event, so we found a Hatterini and a Grimstar raid to get the first two Pokemon of our journey. After a third Grimstar raid, I went to the shop, and I was able to buy 600 Quick Balls, plus a few extra random ones. This was about the exact amount I needed, maybe you would get 650 Quick Balls just to be safe. And a few extra Repeat Balls would have been nice just to catch the Pokemon that are easier to catch a second one of, than to get the other evolution for in the wild. After the Terra raids, I didn't really have a plan, seeing as I had to catch everything, I just started throwing my balls everywhere. Meaning we're gonna be poker wrapping for a bit. I started outside Medali, just because because I bought the balls there, catching Jigglypuff, Bombardier, Primeape, Pikachu, Kamala, and a second Pikachu, which I immediately evolved into Raichu with a Thunderstone. Then we continued with Dunsparce, Fungus, Tropius, Sudowoodo, Oinkalone, another Primeape, another Fungus, and Toad School. And while catching Toad School, my game was about to explode. What is happening? Why is that so laggy? Hello? Then, with catching Scyther, Shrewdle, Shroomish, Persian, Meowth, Squovit, Greedent, Murkrow, and Tandemouse, we came across one of the worst Pokemon of this challenge to catch, Ditto. For some reason, Ditto's catch rate is only 35, and I know what you're thinking, but Mew's catch rate is actually 45. You can't use the Quick Ball and run away cheese on them because they will disappear, and if your Quick Ball doesn't work, they will copy the stats and moveset of my level 100 Miascarada. Ditto did use to copy catch rates, but that was before Generation 5, but rather than deal with my own level 100 disguised as a level 30, I decided to just run away from them and find another one if the Quick Ball didn't work. It took about 7 or 8 Ditto's, but I eventually was able to catch it. The main issue being finding the dittos in the first place. In the meantime, I caught Voltorb, Electrode, another Shroomish to evolve into Breloom, and another Tandemouse. And I would catch the Dene before finally leaving the Medali area for a bit. Using Ditto, I got to work, breeding my Miascarada for 5 eggs, 2 for trading for a Quaxley and Fuecoco, and 3 to fill out the living decks for the Miascarada line. I did this outside of Mezagoza, where I would catch Fletchling, Mareep, Hopip, Young Goose, Smoliv, Sunkern, Starly, and 2 more Smoliv. And this is when my chant reminded me of something important. 
the stakes. Yeah, I had pretty much completely forgotten about them. So we basically started heading to the areas where I thought the stakes were from memory, catching the Pokemon that we needed along the way. I caught Saviper, Skiploom, and Stunky on the way to Wo Chen Stake number one. Does anyone actually even like these things? Like, if you've only done it once, then I guess sure, but it's really boring, and I was only really entertained while doing it because of all the Pokemon I found on the way to them that I still needed to catch. After the first one, I caught Lechonk, Rookity, Pachirisu, Fletchinder, and had a few Sprigatito eggs hatch on the way to the second stake, where I would also catch a Tad Bulb. And in between more Weed Cat eggs, I caught a Mastiff. All while I was very wide. Have you guys ever just been wide? It's pretty nice. Then I caught Toxel, Deerling, and Scatterbug before heading into the Inlet Grottle for Houndor and Diglett. Then I wasted some Quick Balls on Poco Path on Tarantula and Palmy because a regular Pokeball would have been guaranteed. Then en route to get the stake from the mountaintop, I caught Stantler, Luxio, Litleo, Mankey, and Rockruff. Then two of our Sprigatitos evolved into Florigados, as well as our second Tandem Mouse evolving into a mouse hold while catching a Flittle. Then I caught an Axu before finally grabbing the third stake for Wo Chien. At the summit here, I grabbed a Swablu, then did some box organization. I kept every Pokemon organized in number order from the very beginning, continuing to put them in their slots every 5 to 15 Pokemon caught. This saves a lot of time with figuring out what you have and haven't caught yet, because you can just be scrolling through the Pokedex in number order while you're checking for things you need. Seeing as this was only two hours in at this point, my memory of what was caught and what wasn't was still pretty good, but it saves a ton of time at the end of the Pokedex, especially if you're doing it on a different day or something. After the organizing, I found a Larvitar before heading down to the next stake, where on the way I caught Flamigo, Wooper, Magikarp, Choodle, Psyduck, Azuril, Wingle, Weasel, and Wiglet before catching my first Gimmigool. Yeah, um, I also kind of forgot to be picking up Gimmigool coins. Even after just picking up this Gimmigool, I went and got a Drowsy and a Ghastly while passing up three Gimmigools in these ruins. Look at me go. After those two Pokemon, I grabbed the fourth stake for Wo Chien. I stuck around the ponds, catching a Zangoose, Slowpoke, Meryl, Surskit, and Clodzire. During this, I was trying to catch a Gumi, but I was stifled by that 45 catch rate. Tried to weaken it, and it's dead. I went down to the nearby beach after, catching Watril and Shellos before my Meryl evolved into a Zumaril. Didn't exactly try to evolve it this fast, but I figured I'd just catch another Meryl. Here I also caught Sandy Guest, Crabrawler, Gyarados, and Finizen before heading into the nearby swamp, catching Krogunk, Mudbray, and Gumi here. With a near by river here allowing me to catch another Meryl, Aracuda, Basculin, and Masquerain, after which I move on to the next area. I headed to the Stony Cliffs, where we catch the non-Titan Cloth, the Grassy Skiddo, the Fighter Makuita, the Roaring Shinx, the Salty Knackly, the Small Insect Nimble, and the Springy Spoink, which brings us to the first 100 Pokemon obtained. This means we're 25% of the way done. Because I speed ran the save file, there were certain fast travel locations I still haven't gone to yet. So on my way to the Drain Punch Watchtower, I was able to snag a Corvusquire and a Gumshoes, as well as a second Gimmigool at the top of the tower. Below the tower, I also snagged a Ponyard, and on the cliffs above the tower, there's a Ruins area, where I was able to get a Bronzor, Luxray, Tinkatink, and Rufflet. After which, my cat photobombed me on the way to the stake in this area, and on the way to it, I caught two Growlithe, evolving one into Arcanine, before grabbing the fifth steak for Wo Chien. <laughs> With this many steaks, it's time for a barbecue at my place, huh? Don't worry, we'll get Guga Foods to cook. They'll be perfect. To finish up in the cliffs here for now, I grabbed the Hariyama, Charcadet, and Terra Jigglypuff to evolve into Wigglytuff, before moving to the coldest place in the Paldea region. Seeing as we don't have any of the Pokemon in this area yet, it's time for another Pokerap. Here we can grab Citadel just before my screen got taken over by Rowlets. Then we can catch Snover, Cubchoo, Snowrunt, Grievard, Cryogonal, Bergmite, Bronzong, Bear Tick, and Avalug before the Rowlets leave us alone. But we're still out here in Alaska for a bit, catching Sneasel, Delibird, Sawsbuck, Spiritomb, Snome, Arctabax, Crabominable, Frostless, Weavile, Frostmoth, Glaceon, Glalie, Satitan, Fracture, Golduck, Halucha, and Lokix. At this point, I was far enough north to start seeing green again, and for some reason, this prompted me to start killing everything I saw. I figured some of the bulkier Pokemon here, being level 50, would let them survive a hit, even with Meowskarata being at level 100. But I was incorrect, KOing a Vaporeon and a Belly Bolt back to back. I caught an Ndidi before bravely trying the same thing on a Scovillain, but this time I was actually correct. Even with a guaranteed crit, the quad-resisted flower trick 
did not quite knock it out. So I grabbed a Scovillain, after which my Florigato evolved into Masquerada. And if you're wondering why I wasn't just going to use the one I already have, I am transferring the decks to Pokemon Home, and I do kind of have to have a Pokemon after that. Plus, you know, it was level 100 and fully trained already. Still on the frozen coast here, we catch a Lycanroc, Kilowattril, Cloyster, Skrelp, Vaporeon, Wugtrio, and a second Buizel, because I think the Floatzel here despawned. Then I ran into a problem. I had to pee. Ah yes, a speedrunner's greatest nemesis, basic bodily functions. But there was a solution to that problem. I just had Primeape spam Rage Fist with my turbo controller against a normal type. And after I finished peeing, I also threw some waffles in the toaster. And I still needed Iggly buff, so after the Rage Fists, I just caught it. While we were here, I also grabbed a Ralts and a Fido, then used a candy to evolve into Annihilate. Still in the south, I found Metatite and Riolu, then I ended up at a ruins area, which for some reason still didn't cause my brain to think about Gimigul. I caught a fan pee and a second scyther before getting my waffles. So obviously because I was streaming this process, there were some very kind souls in chat wanting to help out, one of which found a Dragapult raid, so I decided why not try it while they ate food. Rowlet is my favorite Pokemon, and they wanted to flex their shinies on me in the raid, and Dragapult knows Flamethrower, so it didn't go well. My only good Pokemon is Miascarada, but at least I can change into a different type with Protein. We tried it a second time, but somebody brought a Coridon, so we had Sunlight happen, which was more of a benefit for the Dragapult than it was for us. And after that, I said, screw the raid, we'll I'll worry about it later. With a hungry cat at my side, I caught Hatena and Grumpig while I fed him. I smacked a Gimmigool before going to grab some more Pokemon in the pond area. I was able to catch a Flaffy before my progress was halted by a certain someone. Wow. Dude man, brother man. Hey guys, what was my first shiny again? Let's take a break here to explain the story behind my first legitimate shiny Pokemon. I was a bit of a cheater as a kid, I really enjoyed poking around Pokemon games with action replay and game sharks. On one particular day in Pokemon Diamond, I was using the walkthrough walls cheat and decided to save and quit my game. My location, the Great Marsh, home of Gen 4's Safari Zone. And the next time I booted up my save file, I would still be there. Surfing around for a bit, I found something interesting, a shiny Meryl. I was flabbergasted because I didn't use the action replay this time upon booting up the game, and I knew the only encounter Shiny's cheat couldn't have possibly been on because I had encountered more Pokemon and none of them were Shiny. And because I was a cheater as a kid, I threw one of my 1000 Master Balls at this Shiny Meryl, and I named it Shiny Rare. And it is impossibly rare because it's a Safari Zone Pokemon in a Master Ball. It makes me wonder if I would be able to transfer it to the newer games. Not that I exactly need to because this is my sixth Shiny Meryl or Azumarill in Scarlet and Violet I'm pretty sure, but maybe that'll make for an interesting video. Anyway, back to catching more Pokemon. Still at the ponds, I caught another Hatena and the Terra Sligu there before heading down to Area Zero. This is definitely better saved for maybe even later in the Pokedex, considering everything down here is such a high level. But I was kind of tired of my on-stream dex progress count being wrong, and I mean, it's still actually wrong, I just don't know it yet. But I wanted to sync up the Pokedex total with my on-stream progress total, and for that I needed to get Gibble, because of the shiny I had caught previously. I caught two Gibble and a Gabite to finish the line with, and now we're back to poker wrapping. We got Gar Garganackle, Great Tusk, Screamtail, Evolved Weasel into Floatzel, and Zwilus. Unfortunately, this very happy dude on Sparse ended up killing itself, so we'd have to wait on getting this one. We'd get Espothra, Glimora, another Zwilus, Dugtrio, and have Atena evolve into Hatchrim before dude on Sparse would be caught. There's just a few more Pokemon to grab down here. At some point, it became nighttime, so we're able to get Fluttermane now. And also on the underground lake, I found a Glimmit before deciding to face the criminal Coridon himself. No, like really, this is one of the few murderers in the Pokemon franchise. And not only do we get to catch it, we get to befriend it when it killed Arvin's parent. That's pretty messed up. At least it's pretty easy to catch though, considering you can use a repeat ball. From full HP, you have roughly a 4% chance each time, so it should only take a few few resets to catch it, so for the love of god, don't use a master ball. After a little bit, we can add Coridon to the total, and after this battle, as well as the other catches, the second Gibble evolved into a Garchomp. Going outside of the cave, we can catch some more Pokemon. Outside Station 3, we have Floet, Corviknight, a second Floet, Brute Bonnet, Girafferig, my Arctabax evolving into Baxcalibur, Venomoth, and Braviary. Then I'd head into the Pentagram Cave, where we caught Chansey, 
Pomo, Sableye, and Houndstone. It took several minutes to find a Roaring Moon, and it was being stubborn, so I tried to weaken it, and yep, it's dead. I caught a second Pomo for Palmot before finding and catching another Roaring Moon. I was catching two of all the Paradox Pokemon, by the way, and you might understand why. But after that, we moved to the cliffs outside of Research Station 2. We can grab Donphan, Talonflame, and two Shandy Shocks here. Nearby, we can find a Jumpluff, which for some reason was one of the hardest Pokemon to catch in the whole Pokedex. This, in my opinion, is a really random Pokemon to have a base catch rate of 45. Catching a Skiploom and evolving it would probably have been easier. And this very difficult to catch Pokemon came at a really bad time because I had to take a deuce really bad. Once I finally caught it, I sprinted to the bathroom to unleash a fury that my toilet bowl has definitely seen before. Once I returned, the final Paradox Pokemon I needed was Slitherwing, which I quickly caught two of. I went back to the rocky area to get a Knackle Stack and a Go-Goat, then went to Research Station 3, finding Volcarona and Farigarath. After catching a second Great Tusk, we'd finally be done with Area 0 for now. From here I head to Medali, which is close to the Dali Zappa Passage, which I still didn't have the fly location for. On the way, I caught a Drifloon and a Babostiff before getting into the cave system. And in the cave system, we can catch Dino, Salandit, Fridgebax, a female Salandit, an Umbreon, and the Terra Lucario. From here I went to the North Shore, grabbing Fomantis, Lurantis, and Vivion, where my Salandit evolved into Salazzle. Then I caught the Terra Sylveon, Sunflora, Gastrodon, Pelipper, Alomomola, Dragalge, Pinchurchin, and a Nummel from a Terradent. This brings us to 214 Pokemon so far, being over halfway done. I went back to the summit, hoping for another Arctobac spawn, but caught another Snover to evolve into a Bomb Snow later instead. I took down a Gimmagool, and on the mountainside below it, I caught Vabroom, Pyroar, then Revavroom. And then it was time for my arch nemesis, the Lag Tree Thicket. I'd say plenty of us don't really like spending time in here, on account of the game running worse than Super Mario 64 in this area. And as such, I definitely didn't hang around to make sure I got every Pokemon. Pokemon, so we'll be back here later a couple times. For now, I caught a Spidops, Zorua, Mimikyu, Impidimp, Grafii, Combi, Orangaroo, and a second Impidimp for evolving into Morgrim. There was also this Zorua disguised as a Morgrim that massively trolled me. And if you can't tell, this is kind of where we start going all over the place, not really having a plan for anything. I went back to Poco Path to grab another Scatterbug for a Spupa. Then we went outside to Alfernada, grabbing a Dosh Bun, where the Spupa evolution occurred. Still here, I caught a Klefki before taking a pee break. Then I caught Bennett and Gotharita, after which the second Impidimp evolved. And for some reason, it took a long time to find Sin trying to find the second one, I found a Driftblim, and of course after struggling to find the first two Synesties, like three Synesties spawned at the same time. But after getting that, I was done with the Alfernada area for a while. I went over to the lake where I was missing quite a bit of stuff from. Here I grabbed a second Sligu to evolve, a Tatsugiri, another Slowpoke, Altaria, Dratini, and Dondozo, after which my second Zwilus finally evolved into Hydreigon. Why did they make it level 64? Just why? Then I caught Veluza, Slowbro, and evolved Sligu into Gudra, before going up into the woods area by the shrine. Here I grabbed Slacking, Heracross, Fortress, Skuntank, grabbed the evolution item for Poltegeist, Toadscroll, and evolved Snover into Snow. Then we scramble around some more, finding Bounsweet, Bonsly, Happiny, and Pichu outside of Los Platos, before calling it a day on a nearly 9 hour stream. In these 9 hours, getting about 63% done with the Pokedex. But for some strange reason, I didn't want to be done just yet. After getting some food, I decided to knock out the rest of the stakes and get some Gimmagool coins off stream. And I figured if I saw any Pokemon I needed, I would just go ahead and grab them. En route to the Chen Pao stakes, I caught Mudsdale, Bellibolt, Toxtricity, and Capsicid. On the way to the Ting Lu stakes, I caught Toxicroak, Kufint, Copperaja, Noibat, Staraptor, Smoliv's evolved into Dolive, Dreadnaw, Dragonair, Blissey in a Terra Raid, Magnemite, Magneton, and Magnazone. And on the way to the Chi Yu stakes, we add Honchcrow, a second Pinchurchin, a second Fracture, Haunter, Bisharp, Cricketot, Cyclozar, Squawkabilly, Curlia, two Grimer, a second Curlia for Gallade, two Teddy Ursa, Phalanx, Noivern, Amoongus, Pupitar, Camerupt, Dolive evolving into Arbaliva, and Fracture into Haxorus to our total. With the stakes done, we sit at 284 Pokemon in the living decks. Then I spent another half hour collecting Gimmagool coins and unlocking some fly spots, during which I caught Roly Coley, two Carcoal, Silicobra, Bramblin, the pain in the ass that is Orthworm, a second Aracuda, Tauros, 
to Steeny and Vespaquin, getting us to 293 Pokemon before the second stream. On the second stream, we got right to work, getting Rotom outside of Porto Marinata, and using the second Pinchurchin I caught, traded it for Haunter in Lavincia, which evolves into Gengar. I also grabbed a second Drowsy in the ruins before taking on the legendaries. I feel like each time you go through and catch these guys, you'll get lucky on one of them. Last time it was Ting Lu, and this time it was Wo Chin. I just missed a shiny Wo Chin. I just threw it in a quick ball. Boom. <laughs> After the battle, we had three evolutions for Cricketoon, Ursa Ring, and Barrascuta. Unfortunately, you can't just throw one ball at every single legendary, or maybe you can, but it's pretty unlikely. Next, I went for Ting Lu, and because I didn't do the history classes yet, I had to walk there. On the way, I caught Leafeon and Zoroark, finally getting us over 300 Pokemon. Then was the battle with Teng Lu. It took a timer ball to get, but it only took about three minutes. Inside Chi Yu's cave, I caught a Houndoom before taking on the Fishy Legendary. This also took only about three minutes with an Ultra Ball doing the job this time. And after the battle, Drowsy evolved into Hypno. On the way to Chen Pao, I accidentally tripped on Flabebe, which I swear is the only way to encounter one in this game. Chen Pao was easily the unluckiest of the legendaries, both because it kept breaking out and because Miascarada is weak to ice. It took around 13 minutes to add to the collection collection, being saved from further torture by a crit capture. After the battle, Karkol evolved into Colossal and Steeny into Sarina. Just below the shrine, we can snag a Terra Jolteon before going on a hyper unfocused adventure around the map, grabbing random stuff we don't have yet. By Artisan, I caught Oricario and Shuppet. Back to Medali, I caught two Eevees, and I quickly used a Firestone to evolve one into Flareon, which is the final evolution we need at this point. We went to the mountain for a Gardevoir and a second Arctobax, seeing as it was a new day. Then I used Loki kick to make Evolving Bisharp into King Gambit a breeze. And it was here where I was completely done collecting Gimmigool coins, finally being able to evolve one into Golden Go. And because I thought it was kind of funny, I evolved the level 5 one from Poco Path Lighthouse, giving us the minimum level of Golden Go. Then we were back to Lag Tree Thicket, where I'd find Pineco and endured the long struggle of finding an Applin in a tree. After how long it took, I decided to just breed the rest of them. While I was at it, I bred for the final Charcadet and used a Gothitelle for a Gotharita, which the me writing the script right now is not even sure where I missed this thing, but you know, we have it. I started hatching the eggs in the desert, which is a place we really haven't been yet. Here we caught Stonejourner, Larvesta, Two Relor, Cacnea, Sandaconda, Cacturn, our Gothita that hatched, and evolving Applin into Appleton. I then found out I didn't have the other apple, so I went back to Tag Tree to grab that for Flapple. I remember to grab a second Pupitar for the Hyranitar evolution before spotting a Bronzong mass outbreak on the map. We need to get a bunch of Bronzor fragments for Charcadet's evolution, so this would be an easy spot to get that done. Right after I got the items, I realized I didn't breed for a Slackoth yet, and I had two seconds left on the sandwich from earlier. After breeding with my Vigoroth, I evolved Charcadet into Armor Rouge. I also caught a second Starly to evolve into Staravia. Just after I caught a second Flaffy to evolve into Ampharos, a wild Ampharos appeared. But after I did didn't catch it right away, I said screw it, I would still evolve it. My Slackoth egg hatched in the pond at the Leaking Tower, and I caught Medicham before grabbing the Static Lilligant by Medali, which I very strategically opened up my picnic right away for it to breed with my Meowsgarada. It definitely wasn't an accident that I didn't put my Ditto into my party, it was it was just a big brain moment. Then I went to the Tag Tree Thicket Pond to catch two Barboach, and my Petalil egg hatched on the way to get a Torkoal. Up north, after catching a Tinkatuff, I found a Bramblegast, and I forgot they even spawned up here but that gets rid of the walking evolution we have to do. After catching it, Flaffy evolved into Ampharos and Barboach into Whiskash. I grabbed the second Tinkatuff I needed, then went to the desert for some stuff I forgot. I grabbed a second Sandygast, Hippopotas, Hippowdon, and three Sandile, before I started trading for Violet Exclusives. Again, I wanted to limit how useful my chat would be in this, but when I was trying to use the trade codes later for some of the Paradox Pokemon, I wasn't really finding anyone, so they probably would have just gotten in anyway, so I decided to trade directly with one who may or may not have shiny hunted every Paradox Pokemon. Even though I said multiple times that they shouldn't because they're just gonna sit in some boxes of my Pokemon home, but they insisted that they wanted to be the scuffed Mr. Beast of Pokemon. And while they were at it, they also sent the Violet version of the armor for Charcadet. We're in the home stretch here now. I still had a lot of things to catch in the East Coast water, so I went there next, catching another Finizen, 
Toxapex, Marini, Bruxish, Shelder, Love Disc, and Quillfish, before heading to the west coast for three Tainamos. And that was just about it for all of the Pokemon I can get without Violet. I started evolving stuff, using a Shiny Stone to evolve Floet into Florgis, then with Candies I evolved Pupitar to Tyranitar, Tinkatuff to Tinkaton, Sandigas to Palosand, Sandile to Crocorock, Tynamo to Electric, and then the third one to Electros with a Thunderstone, and my other Sandile into a Crocodile. And then I caught a Dragonite to bring us to 368 Pokemon. Pokemon. And I decided to get the rest of the Pokemon by starting a Union Circle that had Violet players, and doing so allowed me to evolve Finizen into Palafin. I forgot about Finneon and Luminion, so the others were looking for some Violet exclusives while I caught that. Then we went on a world tour, grabbing Violet exclusives as well as finally evolving stuff I haven't yet, getting Clauncher, Ice Q, Bagon, finally evolving Charcadet into Serraledge, finally did the walking evolutions for Palmot and Rabska, another Bagon, then it took an entire year to find a Pissimian, I dipped into Area 0 for a Dreepy, and then when nighttime hit we found Miss Drevis and Miss Magus in the Bamboo area, caught another Dreepy there and evolved both Dreepies into Dracloak, and then the second one into Dragapult. I also evolved Clauncher into Clawitzer, and two Bagons into Shellgons. Then I had to do some more Blissey raids to get some more level up items, so I could get one to Salamence. Our Violet player had a ghost sandwich running and I needed a Gulpin, so I kept doing Blissey raids for the rest of the evolutions. Once their sandwich ended, I caught and evolved a Gulpin to Swalot. Then I traded them a Sprigatito for Fuecoco, as well as taking care of the evolutions for Slowpoke into Slowking and Scyther into Caesar, and we were able to end the Union Circle there. I used the trade code to get a Quaxly for another Sprigatito, then I evolved Fuecoco into Skeledurge and Quaxly into Quarkovel. Then it was time for the final bit of breeding that I would need to do, getting two more Quaxly, two Fuecoco, one Dreepy, one Clauncher, one Bagon, and one Gulpin. After hatching them all and getting Crocolore and Quaxwell, I was at 399 Pokemon. One final Pokemon to get, Maridon. Thanks to Pokemon Home, you can now just make another save file on your Switch and get the extra Coridon to use in the trade code. I struggled to catch it for about 15 minutes, and I admittedly just gave up and used the Master Ball. Coming from me, I know it, it's crazy, but I have other save files I can get Master Balls from anyway. I booted up the final trade code, some weird guy named Wyatt was just trying to trade a Pachirisu for a legendary before getting a Maridon trainer, and as we exchanged one weird bicycle for another, I was able to complete the Scarlet and Violet Pokedex, therefore giving us the shiny charm, and it only took 21 hours and 36 minutes on the save file, 6 hours of which was just completing the game in the first place. If you want, you can increase the total time taken by another 6 hours to get a second save file finished for the other Coridon, and add in a few extra hours if you have to just use the trade codes and you can't union circle or anything. But in the end, this save file got the Shiny Charm in under 24 hours. That's pretty solid. So if you don't have one yet, stop complaining and just do it. Follow your dreams. You too can get the Shiny Charm.